like to thank all of you for this honor and privilege for being with you today and talking about a very important topic of how to prevent uh, surgical site infection. Now, this is not something new because if you see both Lister's and Ignace's uh, quotations told many centuries before, they said that 60 to 70 percent of infections are preventable. And that is surprisingly true even today. Now, before I talk, I want to make a disclaimer that there may not be a lot of new information in this talk because all of us know what is required to prevent infections. We have heard it before, we have read it many times before, but the actual problem is not the lack of knowledge for surgeons, it's the lack of implementation, it's the lack of protocols and lack of discipline. And so when we are talking about a low rate of infections, and we are proud in Gaga Hospital in 2019, out of the 16,450 cases, when we look at a monthly denominator of how much infections we have had, it's very, very low in clean surgery. And if you have to look at how do you do it, we all know that there are so many risk factors and there are so many preventive strategies that come along with it. But I would like to talk on two important factors, which I think is going to make the clinical difference. And that is the bundle care approach that we have followed, and we just got a proven value in reducing the infections. And also in effectively having a hospital infection control team and surveillance. Now, what is the bundle care approach? The bundle is a set of guidelines, which means it is not one single thing that is going to make a difference. It is a whole lot of things that are tied together. It starts from the preoperative time to the intraoperative period, and also a set of actions that you'll take in the postoperative period, which will create a difference in every single patient. Now, this is what we published in the spine deformity. Does bundle care approach they make a difference? And we published the results of a huge number of patients of 9,607 patients. And you find that from 2014, where we had an infection rate of 3.58% uh, before the application of this bundle care approach, you can see that in 2018, from 14, 3.58% to 1.15% in 2019. And that's a huge difference, both in the superficial and deep infections over here. And this was universal, whether it was cervical, thoracic, or lumbar spine, whether it was instrumented or non-instrumented, we were able to get a very good surgically, <coughs> statistically the significant difference in our infection. Now, although this was experimented and documented in spine, it is equally applicable to all other specialities also. Now, the process map of the CAD bundle, you can see that we took a series of uh, precautions and actions in the pre-op, intra-op, and post-operative period. Now, in the pre-op, there are two important things. One is the glycemic control and the chlorhexidine bath and uh, that is taken on the previous day of surgery and on the morning of uh, surgery. So diabetes mellitus, we all know that that is a very important thing because it impacts the beta lymphocyte function and it reduces the uh, body's capacity to fight staphylococcus aureus. So you need to make sure that the HbA1c level, it's not that day's blood sugar, but we need to always check the HbA1c level that it is less than seven. And in all patients in whom that there is an elective surgery, euglycemia for at least 14 days with a HbA1c lower than seven is very important. And when the patient gets admitted, every one of the patients get a pre-surgical kit that has all the material necessary for hand hygiene, oral hygiene, and a body shower with chlorhexidine possible. 
So the patients do this and there is a nurse which is designated who will teach them how to do it and what is necessary. And all the patients have a chlorhexidine bath the previous day on admission and also on the morning of uh, surgery. This has been very well proved that when you do this, you have a very low rate of infection and this is something that can be easily done and that we have been following. Now intra-op consists of uh, clipping of the hand and avoiding shaving and we need to do it in the operating theater and that's very important and all our fellows and residents are doing it. And in cases where there is no need to remove the hair, where it is not going to make any change in your incision, it is absolutely uh, important that you don't do any of the hair treatment at all. Now, other than that, almost everything is in two important things. Maintaining a normothermia, which is very important, and second is the whole care of what is your antibiotic protocol for this. Now, I would like to spend a couple of minutes on the antibiotic prophylaxis because we all think that just giving a kefiroxim 1.5 grams before surgery is uh, everything to it. It's actually not true because you need to give the right agent, you need to give the right time, you need to give the right dose and you need to give it for the right duration of the time. And this is very, very important. Now, is kefiroxim the best drug that should be possible in our country? Actually, we need to doubt about it. And in our hospital, we found that in a series, as it has been shown in this paper, our maximum number of uh, post-operative infections are gram-negative bacillus which in case, then it doesn't matter whether you're giving kefroxin, you probably need to give another agent which is equally effective against gram-negative bacillus. So in important cases where that is, you need to be careful whether it is kefroxin or some other addition that you need to give for this and we look at it very, very carefully. Secondly, it has to be a weight-based dosing because we know that as the BMI increases, the standard dose does not work at all. This is very, very important. So when you're talking of an appropriate dosage, you need to calculate it at 30 milligrams per kg for pediatric patients, two grams for patients weighing 80 grams or more. So if you're giving 1.5 grams of kefroxin for a patient who's having more than 80 kg body weight, Obviously, this is not enough. And if the patient is weighing more than 100 kgs, it obviously has to be much more. And so we have to be careful about it. Most importantly, this has to be given 30 minutes before incision. And there are many audits performed all around the world, even in the best of the centers, where they have found that this is very difficult to achieve consistently. So you need to be very carefully instructing the anesthetist that they have to give this 30 minutes before in the preoperative ward. Just giving them at the time of induction or after positioning of the patient takes away a huge amount of the benefits of this preoperative antibiotics. Now that is for kefroxin. But if you are using vancomycin or fluoroquinolins, then it's very important that this has to be given two hours before. There is no point in giving vancomycin on the table because that's not going to be useful at all. And if you're using uh, tourniquets or a joint replacement, then it's very important that you have to give it before tourniquets. And in all prolonged surgeries, it has to be given, uh, re-given uh, after four hours or whenever there is an excessive blood loss during the procedure of more than 1.5 liters, then you need to reschedule your antibiotic concentration and antibiotic dosage and give it uh, appropriately. So, if you look at all these four things, and if you critically analyze, you will be surprised that in more than 75% of the times you don't give it. And so uh, you know, in the right way, so you need to play uh, great uh, attention to this. The second important thing is uh, maintain normothermia. Maintain normothermia because this is something we don't concentrate on. If you have a patient who is hypothermic, and there is a lot of reasons why they become hypothermic because we 
undress the patient, we prepare them, we pour cold bletidin or chlorhexidine on them. Uh, they are uh, given repeated wound wash with cold saline and it makes them terribly uh, hypothermic. And this is going to be a problem in infection. So using this tight adapter for IV line, a fluid warmer to make sure that all the fluids are going inside our body temperature. And for every single case, having a forced air warmer, which goes underneath the sheets, is absolutely important. All these are not high cost investments, low cost investments with a high benefit over them. So you need to pay attention to all these things. And in the post-op, again, it's very important that these patients must have supplemental oxygen for three of three to five liters for one hour. And then an IV antibiotic continue till drain removal, and then you need to give a dressing properly. Now, if you look at all that I have talked about in this care bundle, it is not high investment at all. It is just taking care of implementation of the principles that all of us know very, very clearly. So this is extremely important. And as I had shown you before, how after doing this, our infection rates in 2014 of three and odd came dramatically low to 1.1. So this is extremely important. Now the second factor that we need to be really careful is about enforcement and surveillance. And here every big unit must have a hospital infection committee. And we established in 2013 with a chat person usually is a surgical consultant or an anesthetic consultant. But it has a whole lot of people underneath, especially trained and designated nurses who don't take any activities in nursing, but especially in making sure that uh, the hospital infection committee rules are being followed, physician assistant and a quality cell officer. Now you can see that they have a whole lot of activities. Every Monday they have a link nurse meeting, every fortnightly they have an audit, they have a newsletter every four months, they have a HIC committee meeting three months, so they are quite busy and they are looking and concentrating at different categories of staff doing education also surveillance and making sure that every single thing is audited now this is very important auditing of every single activity which will be connected to infection is very uh, important first of all having them is very useful because you have an accurate data uh, every month now you can see from, we can get it at 2014 and you know in every year we get monthly according to whether it is clean surgery or whether it is contaminated surgery and from every year it is possible for you to compare with every year and every month and then also between clean and contaminated surgery between spine arthroplasty trauma open injuries you name it under whatever category you have a data in your hand and that is very the beginning point of asking why we are not doing it. And you know, there is a problem. They are continuously doing the CAPA procedures. That means uh, action taken for prevention. And they are looking at each one of these. And uh, they have a preoperative prophylaxis of how you give uh, monitoring of glucose, whether the uh, temperature has been taken care of, that all the problems in the care bundle has been given and you find that as we have published over here, the HIC actually looks into every single uh, part of this use of the preoperative kit. Has every patient been given a kit and they have used and taken a chlorhexidine bath? Now was the surgical clipper used in all these patients? And you can see here that the five moments of hand hygiene by the healthcare professionals and doctors you can see that there was a sudden dip in the month of April and that is a cause for red alert and this is discussed with the whole team and then you can see that the compliance goes up. So every part of it, every monthly they audit and then <clears throat> they <clears throat> bring it to our notice. Just as an example that they also look at catheter associated urinary tract uh, infection. Every month 
they have an audit and they point it to us. And they look at all these factors. Was the urinary catheter insertion justified? And has the doctor written a notes justifying why he took the decision to insert? And then they took it, is the daily assessment for the need for maintaining urinary care. That means uh, unnecessarily is the catheter maintained for too long. That has to be documented. The collecting bag is kept below the level of the bladder and not on the floor. Every day, somebody is uh, uh, looking at it, that there are no kinks in the catheter and the collecting tube. Securing device has been used to prevent movement of the catheter. Like that, in every part of it, the hospital infection committee has one designated person on each of these who are looking at it. Similarly, for the surgical side infection, they look at every one of the factors which we know for sure affects it. And then they put an audit and they bring it. So you can see that in every one of the patients, they actually look at each one of these procedures and then tick whether it has been. If not, it is marked as a red mark. And at the end of the month, this is brought to the notice of the whole team. And just this factor, uh, regular auditing, regular surveillance, and bringing it to the notice of the treating team plays a huge role in keeping the infections. So, now, some other points I'm sure that people will ask uh, about Ganga Hospital, what they use. Uh, do we use iodine solution irrigation? Uh, we often use, especially in uh, cases which are important. Cases which we think that uh, uh, there is a high rate of infection, then we use iodine solution irrigation because it is very well proved uh, to reduce the infection. The second is, do we use intra-wound vancomycin? Now, this is, uh, many studies have proved that it is very useful. But this last study, Tubaki et al., is actually from our uh, center. Where again, we did a huge study in 606 patients, and we didn't find that it was very useful. The only reason is that probably because uh, wherever the infection rates are already low, and in hospitals where the main infection is gram negative and not gram positive, then the intra-wound vancomycin is not very useful. So we actually now don't use it because this is the uh, publication that we did in spine. And in our uh, cases, we did not find a huge use of uh, infection. That may be because that we had uh, our post-operative infection is mostly gram -like. What about laminar airflow? Now, that's a doubtful or very controversial uh, issue. I think somebody is talking about it uh, in the symposium also. The initial reports were all very highly beneficial, but recent reports many are doubtful and varied. Personal experience in our hospital, we have 36 operating theaters, 14 with laminar flow and 22 without. And personally, there has been no difference. We have studied it very often. There is no difference between in the cases where we have used laminar flow and no uh, laminar flow. So I think a lot of other things also uh, matter uh, quite a lot. Similarly, we also did a, a quick study on whether there is a difference between using uh, autoclavable reusable surgical drapes or uh, disposable surgical drapes and again, there has been no difference in both of these uh, over there. So it is actually in not um, using more uh, costlier equipments or costlier antibiotics. It is in the surgical discipline of following the bundle care. What is important in the preoperative? What is important in the intraoperative? What is important in the postoperative? And it is actually the implementation. And in the implementation, that also has a surveillance by a very strong uh, hospital infection committee. Every year, there will be a small uh, upswing of infection. And when it happens, it has to be immediately uh, found out. We have to find the weak link. Just discussion of this amongst the team brings everybody into a higher care of discipline. And we find that it is very useful. So again, I would like to reiterate. it. It's not the lack of knowledge, but it is the lack of implementation of it and the discipline 
that actually makes the difference in surgical site infection. Thank you very much for giving me this uh, opportunity. And uh, I'm uh, glad that uh, this topic, which is very, very important to everyone, has been chosen as the topic for discussion today. Thank you very much.